Today on The Gamesmith, we're going to be turning travel toothbrush holders into pillars. So the basis of our build today starts with a travel toothbrush holder and they're widely available at drugstores and dollar stores for just a buck or two. And they come in two pieces and you can fit a toothbrush inside so they're hollow and they have all of this wonderful texture particularly on the sides around the column area and it has this wonderful fluting that reminds me of Doric columns, which is what inspired me to create these columns to begin with. So we can put a base on them, and for that I'm going to choose between a few different uh, beverage lids. So this is a lid from a milk jug, uh, quite common to find, and it'll hold uh, the plastic really well. This is a lot more rigid, this came from a chocolate milk bottle and it has this nice fluting on it so I'm probably gonna use that for this piece but what I'm gonna focus on is this orange drink lid for a squeeze bottle now you'll notice that it has this nice little ridge on the uh, outside of the lid here and that ridge this nice little groove here happens to fit this toothbrush case perfectly See how that fits in there? That it fits just beautifully. So this is going to be the basis of my build. I'm going to use some plastic modeling glue since the two parts are actually plastic. This uh, glue is formulated to work perfectly with that. So I'm choosing this uh, bottle because it has this very fine tube that will deposit the glue into the grooves on the base here. So I'll just slide that right in there nice and snugly and just squeeze a little bit of glue out of here. No mess, no fuss. Works perfectly. Then the case will fit snugly into the crease and we just have to wait for that to dry. Now if you have any suggestions for other uses for toothbrush cases, I'd really like to hear those. You'll notice on the top here that there are these open holes and this very plastic looking features. So we'll just cover that up with my awesome dollar store glue gun just by adding some texture to the top here. And I'll just grab a popsicle stick and smooth that out in order to create a texture on the top. So next we have base coated our pillar in matte white and you can use a spray paint or a paint on paint for that. Either works fine. And you can use this pillar as is on your table. It'll work perfectly fine. However, I think I would like to paint this column to make it look more like marble. So to get that marble effect, we're gonna need a few things. Water, dark gray paint, light gray paint, and black paint. Of course, we're gonna have to have some white paint on top of that. Now these are inexpensive acrylic paints that I got from the local dollar store, and these will work just fine. So we'll put all of these on our palette. We want to utilize the texture of our pillar both on the column and on the base as well down here. Here's these nice little indentations that'll work really well for the column effect. We're gonna need a brush, just any old broad brush will do, nothing fancy. So we're gonna start with the dark gray first. So we'll just load up our brush a little bit and we'll start dabbing our pillar with that in splotches around the surface. Make sure you get down into the cracks and crevices of our fluting and you want to try and avoid creating a pattern. You just want to have random splotches all over. Then we load up our brush with water, remove the excess by dragging it on over our napkin, just like we were trying to clean out the brush. Then while our brush is still damp, we want to drag that across our column. 
we want to thin out the gray but not necessarily evenly. We want to leave some areas that are more dark than others. So we can kind of splotch this and drag this and it can feel like you're actually cleaning the pillar off, but you're not, don't worry. Then what you would need to do is let this dry, but if you're impatient, some facial tissue will dry this off or have a fan nearby blowing on this to dry it out much quicker. If you're concerned about what the pillar looks like at this stage, don't. We have other layers of paint to apply and create a marbled texture appearance on this, so don't panic. Now we repeat this procedure with our light gray. We splotch it over top of the build, getting down in between the uh, surface texture into the fluting. Then again, when we're done, we use the diluted water to brush out the light gray. We wipe off the excess, smudging the gray off as we go. Now this is just the undercoat of our marble finish. We're going to keep repeating this procedure until we get the texture appearance that we're looking for. Next we load our brush with white and we thin it out on the damp section of our napkin. And then we dab that over the pillar. And we repeat this process that we've been using with our dark gray and our light gray. Almost like a dry brush type of application. We can add some areas of brighter white in order to promote more contrast on our pillar. At this stage, it should start to look like you are getting a marble texture on your surface. If you feel that you have too much white, go back and add another layer of gray. If you feel you have too much gray, go back and add another layer of white. There is no real formula for doing this. It's based upon your personal preference. Now we're switching to black and we need a much finer brush to do that. So we load our brush with a little bit of black and then we drag that over the surface of our pillar and we want to put that into random streaks. Don't worry about whether the streaks are thick or thin. You just want to put the paint onto the surface and down into the cracks in between the flutes of the pillar. Allow the paint to thin and fade out as you're dragging across the surface. You can have a strong dark area or a faded thinly brushed area. It really doesn't make any difference. These are going to be the dark lines that are most often associated with marble. But like the other colors that we've been putting on here, these are going to be faded out as we move through our build. Now we're going to switch back to our broad brush that we dampen with the water again and we brush out the black in order to dilute the black streaks. We want the streaks to smear over the surface of our build so that they fade into the other colors. Now your brush is going to capture a lot of the black paint that you've already added. So don't forget to remove it from the brush on a napkin nearby. You will find that you end up darkening parts of the pillar too much if you end up doing that like I did right here. So I suggest keeping your brush as clean as possible while you're doing this. Now once again, if you're concerned that your pillar is looking like this black, gray, white, goopy mess, don't panic. That means you're doing the project correctly. 
We need to be thinking about what it's going to look like at the end, not at each step as we move along. So don't panic. Now with our light gray, we dab it over the darkest areas of the pillar in order to fade out or mute those darker areas. Next we return to the white, we load up our brush and dab it over the pillar like we did in the other steps. And you may want to dilute the white uh, with water while you're adding it to the pillar. Now I'm just dabbing this white over this quite aggressively and we're going to end up using this to fade out all of the dark colors underneath. But when this white dries, those colors are going to rise up through that white surface and they're going to look like that marbling texture people are familiar with. Next we use a damp brush with some white on it and then we just drag our brush over the pillar to mute out those layers of paint. However, you don't want to get your brush too wet otherwise you're going to end up washing the acrylic paint off from the lower layers. We just want to blend the layers to reveal the marbling effect below each different layer that we've already put down. After your pillar is dried, we want to load up our brush much like we would for a dry brushing. Please check out my foundations video on that and then we can use that in order to highlight the fluting on our pillar. I think I want to brighten up the edges of our base so that I'm going to actually overload my brush a little bit and add some paint to the edges of the base, but I don't really want to fill in the texture so I need to be careful about doing that. I like my pillars a little on the faded white side, but if you're wanting your black lines to be much brighter and broader and more vibrant, go ahead and do that. Now after this process, what we are left with is a pillar with the marble-like features on it, and the surface is ready for the table. So this was my take on pillars for the game table. Some I paint with detail, others not. Some I add to other builds or use them as standalone features. If you have any suggestions for other projects that could use travel toothbrush cases, please put those in the comment section down below. I'd really like to hear from you. And if you want to see what we're doing here next at the Gamesmith, please hit that subscribe button. On our next video, it's about broken or ruined pillars. And until next time, I'll see you at the table.